was about going to the whole thing about going to heaven. You know, what we hear about going to heaven, you know? This whole idea that after you die, you go to heaven. Now I mentioned this in the previous um in the previous video. Um, let's see something. In the previous video Okay, yeah, I remember now. It was, it was Rick Warren, um, that pastor um, from the one who wrote that book, what you call it, The Purpose Driven Life. And just ma making a mention, because he's one example, a very recent clip from Finding Your Roots. Anyway, he said that as Christians, we're not to um, be bringing heaven to earth, but his kind of idea was that we're to be going to heaven, which is part of the false um, the false prophecy, you know, like in the Matrix, the prophecy is false. Now, how is, how, and in a sense, we can even ask, why is the prophecy false, the going to heaven thing? I mean, let's just look at it first of all and say, okay, and I like that benefit of the doubt kind of statement, and there's really no benefit to doubt, but let's just say we're to approach it from their perspective of going to heaven. Have you taken a look at the heavens? You know, if you look at it from, from a blurry vision and you don't really study it, this is why this particular new publication right here, The Witness of the Stars, we think is really, really, really an important work. I mean, it's written from a, a Western Judeo-Christian perspective, but it includes wisely even the prophecy that was written, the celestial prophecy from Dendera. Many of you might know of Dendera. And, and the house of Chitcheru uh, or Heteru, and, um, you know, what's written on the ceiling, this, this particular um, celestial prophecy. And there's a connection with the whole Maya. You know, we hear about the Maya, the Mayan calendar, and right now this particular year, which, is, uh, which the year in itself is a sign. I mean, and we touched on this um, briefly, we'll say, in a couple of the other vids all connected with 2012 and the so-called signs of the time. But now it's the, the heavens that give us a testimony. You see, it's the heavens that becomes the, the record. You remember it says in, in Revelation that the heavens will be rolled up like a scroll? That's, that's kind of interesting. It says the heavens are a scroll. Revelation says the heavens will be rolled up you know, like a scroll in that day, in that um, manifestation of this particular time. Now, how do we tell time? We touched on time in a couple of other videos. You know, saying the whole, um, the whole misunderstanding and ignorance around time and how in this world system, you understand, know, or this Babylonian, according to the Babylonian cosmology, which is how we, so-called, we live in this kind of system of things, time is orientated from a spiritual perspective in a disorientating way, from its true orientation. And orient in itself means east. Biblically speaking, according to Torah, it's the Kedem. The Kedem is the Eastwood, and it's also called the Ancients and the Ancestors, right? Now, many have been led to believe by modern Christianity, and that's what this article that we had um, kind of introduced, the Tomorrow Ahead, Your Future Prophesied. And notice how it has Your Future Prophesied, and they're looking where? In the stars. You see, but many have a false... Um, kind of a false positive kind of uh, um, understanding about the stars. Many people think that whenever you deal with stars, you deal with astrology, and they, and they shy away from it. They, they are pointing away from the stars. But the more you begin to learn the half of the story, the truth, you begin to recognize that even the biblical prophecies have their celestial aspects and orientation. So when the, the God of of Israel, Elohe Israel said to the Israelites they were worshiping the Queen of Heaven and the host of heaven. They were notice what they were doing. They were worshiping. You don't worship your clock, do you? If you have Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse or some other kind of character, you know, like the children's clocks and some of these 
kind of goofy, crazy clocks people might have, you know, those old-time clocks, whatever. But, you know, you don't worship the, 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 the hour hand on your clock or the number. I just love, you know, me 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, or whatever other o'clock it is. You, you don't. No, those signs is for signs, seasons, days, years. That's how you orientate your life around time. But yet, time itself is an illusion. In other words, what we regard as time, the only true time is the celestial, the heavenly time. And, and that is the aspect that is so strange that most Christians who say they believe in Jesus, the Bible, they, many of them don't recognize that connection because the, 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 the Pharisees, the priests, the clergy, the religious authorities ha have kept them in a so-called a, a sheeple, you understand, at a sheeple state because when you have people as sheeple, then if you could treat people like sheep, then, you know, sheep are led to the slaughter. And this is what we see almost with the judgments every day. This is kind of what we've seen since this Gentile world system um, um, has emerged, like a valley of the dry bones. This is why we got to preach this particular message here on what most professing Christians believe is that they, that the saved, they believe that if you're saved, quote, end quote, if you're saved, right, that you're going to go to heaven at death. You understand? So, you know, when you hear people pass away, and many of us have had loved ones that have passed away, have died, has transcended, there's different ways of expressing, according to people's theological, um, spiritual, and thought processes, you know, who describe that time, but basically they died, right? They, 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 they're dead. They're no longer here in, 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 in the flesh, in the physical. Their spirit is no longer in their flesh. And, not, and people believe that, oh, when you look up in the stars, you're saying that's your loved one. Oh, you see that star twinkling? That could be a satellite. But, it, you know, you tell people this. So this is a modern mythology, you, you know, and the ancient mythologies, you know, are more honest and direct and easy to interpret in their celestial aspect than these modern mythologies. The modern mythologies are totally based on an irrational, schizophrenic, uh, delusional disorder, you understand, of this, what they call it, this, this, this beast, you understand, living in the image of, of, of a beast, not even an animal. It's lower than an animal at a so-called bestial state. But anyway, but they have little or no idea about what they will do in heaven. This is the next thing. People believe that, okay, they'll go to heaven. So if you speak to some of the professing Christian, and, you know, you get on the topic, man, oh, you know, after you once die, what do you believe happens? You know, if you if you were, if you're saved and sanctified and filled with, you know, then you're going to go to heaven. But if well, you're not, you know, well, you're going to go to hell. So they have this kind of one that's going to go up, you know, and it's a very convenient mythology. You know, the modern so-called Gentile white Western Christian mythology that if you're good, you're going up to heaven, you understand? And if you're bad, you're going down. So if you are the good, if you're amongst the good and you go to heaven, what are you, what are you going to do? And when I check out the heavens, I see a lot of stars out there. Is there a particular constellation? That is the heavens, you know, or is one going to go to this star over there? Is everybody going to have their own star or everyone going to have their own planet, you know? And they basically tell you, well, the Bible don't tell us that, all of that. That's what they'll respond to you. What does the Bible teach is the reward of the saved. You know, those who are saved. Those who are saved. Now, Bamarinya, this might be a good teachable moment um, for those of the disciples who are checking this out about in Amharic, the traditional, um, you know, if you say in Demine, you know, like, how are you male? In Demenesh, how are you female? One would say, Dechnaneng, you know, Dechnaneng, or Ine Dechnaneng, Exiabi Hayimeskena. I am, it's usually interpreted as, I am good, but there's a lot of different words for good in, in the Ethiopic and the Afro-Shemitic and the Hebrew language, and each particular word for good 
has a specific um a specific reference point you know a specific reference point in the real consciousness you know in in the real word matrix so often what happens is that 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 um dehna neng is perceived as being well i am good in the sense of like it's all good i am good but literally according to the amharic and the ethiopic that means i am saved because dehna medan um medhane medhane alem or medhane alem you understand means the savior of the world in ethiopic and afro shemitic language and the root of that now in the amharic we have as as um dehna or dehna or dehna in modern speech but in ancient speech that he was more of a guttural a kh so it was dehna as medhane medhane ale either way the word basically means as root saved so in judeo christian ethiopian this i think is a very um important point not just about the linguistics of it not just about just learning to speak in hard but learning to think you understand amhara or learning to think in that chosen people's consciousness from the root you understand from the root and and the word in the beginning is the word so when you comprehend that the response is not i am good god be praised it is yahi here you must scan is really i am saved i am saved it was another way of of ancient ethiopian christians and and believe as in the mitmanan the faithful you know saying giving thanks even on a daily and a regular basis for their salvation and consciousness in Christos consciousness in Yeshua you understand for that access and that right to the tree of life now as time has gone on you know and even in the english language we use words many people use words and they don't know the cultural etymological context or origin of the words and if we talk about a modern witchcraft or deception or delusion it must be accomplished by word you know saying that's what they call putting a spell if they put a spell on somebody now you might think a spell is just how the word is spelled but spell has everything to do with word you know saying proper overstanding and understanding of word but most people do not understand the words so when we speak about even heaven what does heaven truly mean and what does it truly mean in that sense of going to heaven and um what will people be doing in heaven Now here was interesting and we've taught on this before and we're making a point of this in this particular in this particular vid to make this the the front and center point about going to heaven because ones will tell us that when we study things like the heavens you know whether in witness to the stars or we put dendera you know dendera complex you know what 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 the mysteries of ancient Egypt teach to remember Moses was learned in all the mysteries or the wisdom of the Egypts and he was mighty not just in the word but in the deed you know so therefore we are following in those footsteps of our great lawgiver you know saying of Moshe of Musa of Moses and even Christos Yeshua was in Egypt I've called my son out of Egypt so we even recognize from an Ethiopian Hebrew and elect Rastafari perspective that Egypt is important as either an initiation or as a training in the true wisdom of the Bible. You see that's not what the world tells you. That's not the conventional view of Egypt from whitewashed Christianity. But as we've been saying, like Neo said in the movie, we are saying in reality that the prophecy, their prophecy which has been known as the prophecy is false. you know saying and rastafari rastafari revelation it proves that their whitewash prophecy is false but there's many who haven't gotten the good news who haven't heard the good news 
as of yet. So the belief in, quote, going to heaven at death is not only held by most professing Christians, and this is what's so shocking. If you ask them to give you a verse, give me some verse in Scripture where it says that. I mean, even if you say that Yeshua, he went up, he ascended into heaven. Well, if, if he be the Son of God, if he be the Bain Ha Elohim, then amen, amen, so, so be it, you know. But where did you get the idea, you understand, that as a so-called profession, whitewashed Christian, uh, 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 Christian, you understand, that you are going to heaven at, 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 at death, you understand? Now, people all over the world in many religions cling to a belief in some kind of afterlife. Now, some type of reward or a blissful afterlife after death. Now, in other religious um, disciplines, they, they might call it like karma, you understand? And in the cannabis matrix, it probes that, that issue of, uh, concerning karma, but from a biblical perspective. See, karma for the ancient Hindus is what the Christians might talk about as like debt, when you talk about debt, spiritual debt, or even leading to sin, which ultimately leads to death. However, many Christians believe and they cling to this idea of going to heaven at death. Now, surprising as it may seem, now get this, now hold on to your seats or your hats or, you know, hold on to something. Some of you all, some of you already know this, but surprising as it may seem, Neither Joshua, neither Jesus, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, nor the apostles, nor the Ethiopian Hebrew apostles of Joshua taught that the righteous or the Khan, the justified ones, right, go to heaven when they die. Now, that's what's so shocking. So when we heard this uh, Rick Warren guy, you understand? Purpose Driven Life. That's a strange title. Somehow it doesn't really seem very Christian from, from the Bible perspective. But hear him say it's not our role. In other words, what he is and what he represents as a so-called Christian, he says it's not our role to bring heaven down to earth. And I began to think this was finding your roots, uh, Skip Gates, you know, as this PBS thing, and you probably can check it out on the internet. It's probably up there in this particular season right now. And if you look at his interview, part of his interview, he says it's not for us to bring heaven to earth. I'm like, who is this guy? I said, no wonder Adoni, the, the Lord, our black Lord and Savior, will say to such ones, I never knew you. Away from me, you lawless ones. Because our Father prayer even speaks to that. You see, and this is where modern Christianity, and, and this is another reason that justifies the end of the church age. You understand? And it's not us that is saying, this is the Bible that is saying. It's other honest Christians have looked at prophecy and said that we are coming to a time, or there will be a time from the time that they saw this, sometime in the not-too-distant future, and we're saying that time is closer even in our time or in this time or the time that you're viewing this, that the church age, you understand, the church age comes to an end and when we find the church of Laodicea, the church of Laodicea, which is the seventh church, this points to the present age of Christianity that we are in. You remember what speaks about um, there are seven kings and it is the eighth, and then you see how the number seven and eight is used in the scripture. Now, when we start to look at the context of the heavens, we can see that it was talking about certain specific time. It was a way that, that the prophets and even other ancient peoples were able to communicate when something would happen or what would be the sign that this would happen, what would be like, like, like what time to meet. You know, how you think they went? They, they didn't look at their watches and say, well, meet me at 7 o'clock. But they must have had some way to calculate time. 
And from a Western Gentile or whitewashed perspective, a lot of this has been lost. The so-called New Age movement, even the 2012, and a lot of this other post-Woodstock kind of Generation X baby boomers, they are still more open to the African or the non-European perspective because from the European perspective, they go back to the dark age and, they, and they're back at the pit. You understand? It's only when they came out of those so-called ignorant times, Europe, and were able to travel around the world and be initiated into different um, disciplines, you know what I'm saying, different sciences that their own intellectual and, and, and knowledge of the world really grew. So whenever you hear them say, well, we only knew such and such, you know, unless those are your racial ancestors, it's only they, many of our ancestors, knew these things and testified of these things. But let's just go through this right here where it says, um, so surprising as it may seem, neither Yeshua nor the apostles taught that the righteous go to heaven when they die. And we did challenge, challenge them. You know what I'm saying? In other words, produce scriptures that say this. You know what I'm saying? So it's another, it's another belief system that European or white Christians have superimposed on the Bible. You know what I'm saying? But it's not what the Bible actually says of itself. So the reward that Yeshua promises his faithful followers, according to Revelation 22 and 12, is not heaven. It's not heaven as many people have been um, um, taught or told or programmed um, into believing or be lie even. In fact, its immediate focus involves, get this, ruling with him on earth. The immediate focus of the reward that Yeshua promises to his faithful followers is not heaven, but it's the fact of ruling, the reality of ruling with him on earth. Now they say, note the admission, the admission of this secular encyclopedia, the New International Encyclopedia, first edition says this, the dominant view in the early church seems to have been that until the return of the Lord upon the clouds of heaven to raise the dead, those who had died were asleep and that they would be suddenly awakened to be given their new bodies, after which they would reign with him on earth for a thousand years. And that was under the entry for heaven, right? The early church of God, which Jesus Christos or Jesus Christ established, did not teach the concept of, quote, going to heaven as our eternal destiny. Now, it's, it's kind of sad on a certain level, you know, when, I, when you think that, not if, but this is the truth. If you don't know it, you know, find it, check it out for yourself. But we have learned this and, and have come to know this, so we can say that it is true. From our testimony, if you can't testify like that, check it out for yourself and find the truth. But knowing that this is true, just think about how many generations, you know, have so-called died with that particular, I can't call it hope, but deception. It's not a, it's a false hope, but it's a deception, right? It's a deception because if the early church of God, you understand, know of Jesus Christos, did not teach the concept of going to heaven as our eternal destiny, then we have to ask, well, where did this idea come from? This idea did not gain wide acceptance until long after the Hawariya, you understand, the, the Hawariyat or the, or the apostles had died. So it wasn't until all of the apostles that were directly connected with um, Yeshua with the Jesus Christos, with the Adonenu, or with his his early disciples become a po turned who became apostles who were commissioned and went forth in the Great Commission, 
as apostles to make more disciples. After that generation had 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 died or or had left the scene, in other words, rather Yeshua he told that he told his disciples, he told his students, you know, what I'm saying because the the public, the crowd, he gave them mythology, he gave them parables, he gave them we could say he gave them stories, symbolic stories, verbal, you know, verbal um verbal hieroglyphs. As, as we call them, but he plainly told his disciples now who he revealed the true mystery. He said, no one has ascended to heaven. No one, he says, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man. Now, it's a very interesting link right here when we speak about the Son of Man from its it's 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 the Hebrew Bible, you know, saying or the Navim, the Navim, the prophets, and then we see the use of Son of Man in its New Testament, in the New Testament um, context of 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 Yeshua, of HaMoshiach. Now, when we base it on the true foundation, it's true inner Africa. Um, or it's Afrogenesis. The true Bible needs to be overstood and comprehended and received and Kabbalah from its Afrogenesis. That Son of Man, get this, is actually Cheru, the son of Adam, or the son of, of we could say Osiris or Asa, is really the Cheru, because Horus or Cheru in the Afro Shemitic Ethiopic, it means. It's a name, and it's a title. It means the chosen one. So when we read the Gutters, right, the Gutters New Testament and the Gutters Bible, here's what we see that's very interesting. We find that where it says choose or chosen, it's all referring to aspects, for lack of a better, you know, better word or reference, of, of Horus. But from an Ethiopic reference, that word cheru or cheraye or cheriyo cheraye, it means to elect to choose. So the, the 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 root of the mystery of God in Christ, the keys to understanding this are Ethiopic. But we're going to get into a little bit more on this. We have to pause for the chorus. We're going to get into a little bit more on this, proving. You're saying that the, that the Gentile prophecy is false, but the salvation is the revelation of Rastafari. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. Shalom, Rastafari. <laughs> 